Hey guys, I just finished reading The Distant Hours by Kate Morton, and in lieu of a standard review, I wanted to take this opportunity to look at this book in the context of the modern gothic genre subgenre. So in addition to The Distant Hours, I'm going to be taking a look at Kate Morton's first book, The House at Riverton. Two other modern gothic stories, The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Satterfield, which came out about a decade ago, and Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, which came out in the 1930s. And of course, I may have to reference the queen mother of them all, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, which is not modern gothic, it is gothic gothic. When you hear a gothic story's plot described to you, it might just sound like it's a mystery novel. But I think it's different because mysteries are focusing on the whodunit. The main thing that we want to see from a mystery novel is the bad guy to be discovered and brought to justice. However, in a gothic novel, we are here to see character development, and this happens in the context of discovering some long-suppressed mystery. So the House of Riverton is a little bit different, but these four books <laughs> I can sum up just in one go. Our protagonist, who is female, and between the ages of 18 and 30, has a sort of lonely life. At least one member of her nuclear family has died, and she's kind of into, like, artsy slash nerdy stuff. Then, through an unexpected stroke of fate, she ends up at a big house in the British countryside, and the inhabitants of this house are very closed off and mysterious because something bad happened to them one to fifty years ago, and our protagonist needs to develop a closer relationship to this person or these people in order to bring the old dirt out so that we can heal from it. And at the end, it's not guaranteed, but there's a pretty good chance that the big house is gonna burn down. And these novels can be kind of hard to write because in order for that storyline to work, the most interesting thing that happens doesn't happen to our protagonist and happens before the book begins. So the author really has to make us care about the protagonist so that we can care about the people that they care about, so that we can care about the thing that happened to those people that we're just going to obliquely experience. The other thing that the author really needs to get right is the atmosphere. We don't want the problems of the past to be fully resolved, so there needs to be a sort of spookiness or an uneasiness that will tip us off to the fact that something weird happened and that we may be able to resolve through the protagonist's actions. So let's compare how Kate Morton creates a sense of place to how Daphne du Maurier creates a sense of place. I'm going to read you a passage from The Distant Hours and a passage from Rebecca, which are basically describing the same thing, and we'll see how they go about it. This is going to be from page 43 of The Distant Hours, so not too far in, and it doesn't really contain any spoilers, but it's possible that you will want to mute if you are very, very concerned about spoilers. I walked and I walked until just when I thought I was in danger of losing myself forever in an unending wooded grove, I emerged through a rusted gate to find a neglected bathing pool laid out before me. It was large and circular, at least thirty feet across, and I knew it at once as the pool Mrs. Bird had told me about. It was similar in some ways, of course, to its smaller twin down by the farmhouse, yet I was struck by the differences. Where Mrs. Bird's pool glistened blithely beneath the sun, manicured lawn reaching out to tether itself to the sandstone surround, this one had long been left to its own devices. The edging stones were coated in moss, and gaps had appeared between them, so the pool was fringed now by king cups and oxeye daisies, yellow faces vying for the patchy sunlight. Lily pads grew wild across the surface, one tiled over the other, and the warm breeze rippled the entire skin like that of a giant scaled fish, the sort that evolves unchecked and exotic aberration. And now from the very first page of Rebecca, you really should not worry about spoilers. This is literally the second paragraph. 
No smoke came from the chimney, and the little lattice windows gaped forlorn. Then, like all dreamers, I was possessed of a sudden with supernatural powers and passed like a spirit through the barrier before me. The drive wound away in front of me, twisting and turning as it had always done, but as I advanced I was aware that a change had come upon it. It was narrow and unkept, not the drive that we had known. At first I was puzzled and did not understand and it was only when I bent my head to avoid the low-swinging branch of a tree that I realized what had happened. Nature had come into her own again, and, little by little, in her stealthy, insidious way, had encroached upon the drive with long, tenacious fingers. The woods, always a menace even in the past, had triumphed in the end. They crowded, dark and uncontrolled, to the borders of the drive. The beeches, with white naked limbs, leant close to one another, their branches intermingled in a strange embrace, making a vault above my head like the archway of a church. And there were other trees as well, trees that I did not recognize, squat oaks and tortured elms that sagged cheek by jowl with the beeches and had thrust themselves out of the quiet earth, along with the monster shrubs and plants, none of which I remembered. So, time to play Spot the Difference. I feel like in the distant hours, Kate Morton has a checklist of the types of senses she needs to evoke in every scene. Talk about the light, talk about the plants, talk about the smells, talk about whatever else is important to that scene. And it doesn't really have a purpose. It's just describing the setting. Whereas in Rebecca, all of this is really about the protagonist. Edie, the main character of The Distant Hours, is just existing in a place and describing her experiences. Whereas the unnamed protagonist of Rebecca is using the description of the scenery to give us more information about her feelings. Notice how in the beginning of both of them there's a lot of first person. Then both of them spend a couple of sentences just talking about the stuff, the setting. And in The Distant Hours, it stops there. But in Rebecca, the paragraph comes back to talk about the protagonist again. And this means that when I'm reading books by Kate Morton, I often just feel like I'm wasting my time. Because I don't actually care what the pool looks like. That doesn't matter to the story as a whole. But in Rebecca, the descriptions are used to show how the protagonist feels that this place has changed. Which means perhaps that she has changed too. And the chapter goes on not immediately to address the plot, but first for the narrator to explore how she feels different than when the main action of the story took place. And all that is instigated by this dream she has about her home. And now we come to character development, which I feel is the main problem with The House at Riverton. The impression that I get from this book is that Kate Morton thought of the climax first, and she got a really clear picture of this nuanced and complex relationship between three people that ends up in disaster. But you can't just have that, you need to build up to it. So none of the three people involved in the climax are the main character. The main character, Grace Bradley, is the maid of two sisters. And everything about this book makes me feel like Kate Morton was a slave to this climax. The main character, Grace Bradley, isn't any of the three people who the interesting thing happens to. And there's a little bit of murkiness, as there is in the camera right now. But I think that she never actually figures out what happened to these people. And since the book is told in first person, which most modern gothic novels are, it means that the climax has to get pushed to the very end so we can switch to third person. So, like, uh, the book ends on page 468. The climax really gets started on page 462. And then when you get to the end of the climax, it just stops. All of the, like, the whole rest of the novel was falling actions from that. Which just makes me wish that this novel had a different main character. One who actually had interesting things happen to her, or one who had to figure out the interesting things that happened to other people. As opposed to someone who was involved with some people to whom interesting things happened. Which wouldn't really make it a modern gothic novel, but it could still be a good general literary fiction novel. 
And then The Distant Hours kind of has the opposite problem. I really liked the main character, Edie, but the book is divided into sort of numbered chapters and titled chapters was how I thought of them, and the titled chapters are in first person from Edie's perspective and they're set in the 1990s, and the numbered chapters are set in the 1940s. They're told in third person and sort of jump to several people's perspectives. The, the three Blythe sisters, a uh, man who gets all mixed up with them, Thomas Cavill, and Edie's mother, Meredith. And it's about a 50-50 split between the title chapters and the number chapters. Which makes me sad because I wanted to figure things out with Edie through her eyes. I felt sort of uncomfortable knowing things that she didn't know. And for the sort of middle two-thirds of the book, I felt like I was just sort of dredging along with either with Edie being at her house, basically living her life and not having that much to do with the, the quest for information, or with the Blythe sisters giving us the setup to the big interesting thing. And Edie goes and hangs out with them for a little bit fairly early in the book, and then she goes back at the end. And I wish that she could have spent more of the middle with the Blythe sisters. And the discoveries about the past could have unfolded in the same way, but through Edie's perspective as opposed to through a third-person perspective. Jane Eyre, The Thirteenth Tale, and Rebecca are all told entirely in first person, which connects us to our heroine a lot better. And while pretty much all relevant information is revealed in Jane Eyre and in The Thirteenth Tale, Rebecca leaves a couple of things unclear, and I was okay with that. I was okay with not knowing everything, because I knew everything that the protagonist knew. And so together we were able to sufficiently fill in the blanks. So what do I think of Kate Morton? I definitely prefer The Distant Hours to The House at Riverton, and this is promising because The House at Riverton was her first book and The Distant Hours is her third. And I think she realized that the, the outline and the placement of the climax didn't really work in The House at Riverton, and she went with more of a standard modern gothic outline, if you remember back from the beginning of the video, in The Distant Hours. And I'm actually a little bit surprised that I like this one more because it's historical section is set during the Second World War, whereas the historical section of House of Riverton was set during the 1920s. And I think that the 20s are pretty interesting. I'll read about them. I hate to read about the Second World War. I think it's so boring and people are just talking about rations all the time and oh no the Germans and I'm kind of done. So the fact that Kate Morton was able to get me through sections about stuff that bores me is really impressive. And if you read this and really enjoy it, maybe go ahead and read The House at Riverton, but I don't think it's required reading. Have fun!